Hi, and welcome back to Studio Tamara, the Mystical Paintress. Today, I'd like to send a shout out to all of the hat makers out there. Um, thank you, what you do is wonderful and important. And today we are going to be doing a painting of my cat, Da Vinci. He's a little Maine Coon um, black kitty. And I'm gonna show you how to paint black fur because often black fur is not black. It's blue and purple and gray. and um, so we're going to do this little 8x10 portrait. I had sketched it out prior, which I highly recommend so that you have some guidelines. Um, so sketch out your painting and we're going to get started. My two favorite brushes that I prefer to use are flat, which are flat across the top, and filbert, which are long and rounded at the top. So these are the predominantly the brushes that I use in all different sizes most of the time when I'm doing plein air or pet portraits. Um, I start out with the bigger brush, and if you do the background first, I use the big square one. If I do the eyes first, I have some little specialty um, smaller brushes that I have for that as well. So, tis the season for pet portraits. Everybody wants a painting of their baby. So, let's get started. Okay. Okay, so here are some of my smaller detail brushes, just random little brushes that we use. And I'm going to, you know, you can put the brush on the canvas and get an idea of how far the bristles will spread. This looks like a good one to block in the dark areas of the eye. So I'm gonna put these brushes here, get a little turp. I'm gonna pull my rag down here. If you guys can see everything I'm doing. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna go with a handmade, homemade black, which would be burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue and burnt umber make a great black. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is just real easy, you know what? Hang on, I need my mall stick. This is a mall stick. I highly recommend getting one. This way your wrist can can lean on the palette while you're painting. If it's a little too blue, add brown. If it's a little too brown, add blue. But basically what I'm doing right here is I'm just trying to get the darks that I see in the reference photo that I have over there. So, now the benefit to doing this for black, rather than just using black out of the tube, is it has more movement. Um, I mean, you can use black black uh, where you really, really want to make something stick out more. But often I just use this mix. And then I'm squinting, I'm looking at my reference. Comes up like this. It's a little too black, add a little brown, lightens it up. You can also add a little violet gray, which we're gonna be doing a lot of here in a minute. Okay, so we're working the eye. I'm doing the eyes first. I don't always do this, but in this particular case, um, the eye is gonna be the focal point, meaning where your um, attention goes. So I want to very carefully do the eye, and I've gotta make sure. Boy, drawing is super important too. I can't stress enough. Draw, 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 take a sketchbook everywhere you go. So I'm adding a little violet gray to the corner of the eye here. Okay, and there's a little bit of that up here too that I see. Yep, and then there's a dark spot here that I see in the reference. So, so there's the dark and once you get that in, then you go from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash off my brush because I really like this brush. It's got short bristles and it's got really good um, uh, flexibility, but it's not sloppy. 
So I'm, I'm a fan of this brush. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is the center of the eye here is not black. It's kind of like blue and gray mixed with that pre-mixed black color. It's a little bit, your pupil here is a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna paint what I see. You know, it's right or it's wrong, but if it's what I see, and I paint what I see, it's going to look okay. All right. So we got that guy. Uh, let me see. This, we need a little violet gray for this. Because it gets a little lighter here into his. Uh, into his eye. So studying reference, drawing, all very, very important. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that, I think. I'm going to wipe that up a little because we're not quite there yet, and I don't want to get ahead of myself. So, Okay, so there's that. Now, the next thing is we got to look at the far eye over here. And in the picture, the little eyelash area kind of does this. And this comes in very sharp. You know, your mind sometimes will tell you, no, that's not how it looks. And it is how it looks, but your mind, you know, tells you, do it this way. Don't. Don't listen to your mind. Paint what you see every time. If you see it and you paint it like you see it, it's going to look real, period. It's that simple. Okay, so we've got dark, dark. All right, I'm doing the eyes first because I think it'll be easier for you to see the painting. If I do the eyes first, um, if I do everything else, it kind of has your eyes floating around and you don't really know what to do there so all right then this whole area of this far eye is in shadow the whole thing the whole area is in shadow all of this is shadow and then I'm going to use a little bit of that homemade black again to get that pupil in there but you don't want to do it black you don't want it to jump out you want it to blend in nice, just like that. Okay, easy peasy, you guys got this. Isn't that fun? That's fun. Okay, kitty, little kitty cat. Uh, this little Da Vinci, he had has had quite the um, ordeal. He had what is called a congenital pericardial diaphragmatic hernia, which means he was born with the wall between his heart, the diaphragm, um, had a big hole in it, and so his intestines and his liver started to form around his heart, which, if not corrected when they're young, can strangle his heart. So he's about five and a half months old. He's my little baby, and... Uh, I opted to have that done. So he's currently in a cone, in a cage, because I can't hold him for the first week. And I thought, how lovely. He's sitting in here in the studio with me, and I could do a nice little painting of him. Okay, I don't want to get too ahead of myself here. Just putting a few key, key points down. Now, we're going to take a break, and I'm going to show you a couple photos of my little Vinch. And now we are ready to move on to painting his eye. He has a very unique eye color. It's kind of like green and brown and hazel. Sometimes he looks like he has brown eyes. 
Um, the best thing I can tell you for advice on painting eyes, study the reference. Look at the animal. Take lots of pictures if you're doing a commission of someone else's animal. Get to know their personality. Spend a lot more time looking because you just never know exactly what colors you come in contact with until you look. So we're going to try that's not light enough. So I'm going to use Cad Yellow Light and White. See if we can get this a little lighter. This is like a highlight on the eye right here. Yeah, a little lighter. <laughs> Just keep making it lighter and lighter and lighter until we get it. The beautiful thing about working with oil is you can lighten it and darken it at will. So it's, it's really fabulous. It's just such a lovely medium. I, that's why I, I used to use pastel, and I really got away from pastel as soon as I fell in love with oil paint. So many people refer to oil paint as the Cadillac of, of all art mediums. It's the most sought after by collectors, so they say but I just love the look of oil paint and the idea that the old masters used it and it's just very cool. All right, so the edge of his eye is almost got what looks like ice blue. So somehow I have to figure out how to make a really icy light, light blue, but it's almost white. So I'm gonna use that little turquoisey color I have in this. And I'm going to mix them. Am I in the way? I don't want to get in the way. There it is. Yay! Whoops. Oh, I love it when I can hit the color the first time. Um, this comes from lots of years of mixing color, though. It wasn't by accident. Draw. If, if somebody asked me what are the two things I can do to become a better artist, number one, draw every day. Everything in your house, just draw, draw, draw. Number two, mix colors. Mix paint so that you know intuitively while you're painting, you know, oh, I need this color for a highlight in the snow, and I need this color for a, for this or for that. Okay, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Boy, I really love this little brush. This is a Richeson 9630 is what it is. Love it. Zero is the size, Richeson. Love it. I'm gonna have to order some more of it because this is just perfect for eyes. Okay, I'm using a little sap green, yellow ochre, and burnt sienna here in this mix for the darker eye color here. And really, guys, to make eyes look 3D, they have to go back just like an orb would. And to make things look real, um, you, you gotta have different color, broken color. Um, you gotta have shadows. You gotta have all the same things as if I was painting a, anything else. So pay very close attention to the reference again. In this one, this guy's got some, there's a little bit darker here. Almost like ochre. And a little darker here. I'm going to add a little cad yellow just because I feel like intuitively it needs to be added in here. And I want to, hmm, I want to kind of, there we go. I also want to put a little there. And we need a little more of that greeny white light color, but not quite. It's sort of shadowed right here. So when I'm painting an eye, I look at it and I study it just like if I was painting an entire face or anything else. There's nuances. There's a little brown here at the top underneath the shadow. 
is a little more brown. When I say a little more brown, I don't mean take brown straight out of the tube and put it in there. I mean, you know, mix a little brown into your mix. I need a little cobalt in here. I think that's where my highlight is, so I'm going to kind of leave that alone. Okay, that's good. Good. You see a little dark down here. Okay, and then this is kind of shadowed. Okay, now I'm going to go back, mix a little brown. I apologize, this, this video might be a little bit longer, but I'm going to take you step by step through this entire process. Um, if any of my students from Christine's Gallery are watching, I'll send a big old hello out to all of you guys. Linda and Lily and Connie and Julie and Christine. and We have a lot of fun at art camp every summer at Christine's Gallery up in Nama, and we did a a class where everybody did a painting of their pet uh, two summers ago, and that was a hoot. We had a ball. Okay. There. Now it's starting to look like an eye. Anyways, um, for people that, you know, want a refresher or practice doing pets, this is free. This doesn't cost you anything. You can stop and pause and rewind it if you need to. Um... Let's see, the sun is changing, so it's kind of hard for me. Can you guys see? Okay, good. All right. Uh, Got to keep this pupil up in front. It's definitely dark, so we've got to keep this guy dark. And at the bottom, it's round. It's not flat, so we're going to... There it is. There's my little buddy. Okay. So, what you got here is the very convincing beginnings of a not-so-bad eye. Now, I'm going to add a little gray to this mixture. Because, again, when I look at my reference, I see a little gray in here. Very little. Like my friend Brandt always says, the magic is in the subtleties. I'm going to take a little bit of my violet gray, and we'll see how this works out here. It looks like the eye has kind of got a little lining of it, like so. Got some there. Got a little here. And my little buddy. Oh, my kitty. Poor thing. He's a fighter, though. He's going to pull through. This is all about him. I do a painting of every pet I have. Um, and they're all on the wall. And I say hello to them every morning when I get up and I walk down the hallway and go downstairs to make coffee. Say hi to my babies. Some are with me, some aren't. They've passed on. It's hard losing a pet. Especially, you know, some of them you just, I don't know how, but somehow you just really get close to. So, okay, so I am using a tiny, tiny brush here, and I don't need to be using this tiny brush other than, you know, for the eye detail. So I'm going to finish the eye detail here. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to a little bigger brush. I got to get I got to figure this far eye out because it's so dark. You can't really see. Uh, it's got a little blue in it. I want to move on to the fur so bad, but I got to finish this. All right. Working with oil is just so much fun. I, I love it. So, all right, there's that pupil. This is moving strangely, this, and I don't know why. Maybe because I have such a little brush here, but the oil is just moving strangely. Okay. I'm 
Not too bad. Not too bad. We're getting there. We're getting there. My little buddy. My little Da Vinci. Kitan Da Vinci. Okay. I'm going to get this little line here. I just need to get this line a little bit. Ah. Well, the nice thing is if you screw up with oil, you can go right over it. Just like that. Okay. A little blue, a little brown. You know, when I say to mix, you know, certain colors and you need this and you need that, um, you can decide. If you want to use straight black, by all means, use straight black. Um, you know, don't let me deter that. If that's something you want to do, then for sure you should do it. Now, this guy, this eye does have a little bit of color in it when I look at the reference, but not a lot. So, I just want to do that. Okay. I'm okay with that for now. Okay. The white dot. Often animals also, because their eyeballs are shaped as such, that when the sun hits them, it reflects the sky, so they'll have the tiniest bit of blue instead of just a white reflection. And when I say tiny, I mean, <laughs> I don't even know that the human eye could see it. So um, sometimes you really can see it, but sometimes you can't. So one thing's for sure, sometimes. All right, we're going to put the, uh, the dot on there. There's that. Now, sorry folks, but I got to bring this guy in here a little bit closer to do this one. It's just a little hard to try and reach. Okay. There we go. Also, don't forget to pick up one of these really cool erasers. And you can always lift extra oil up and draw with it. It's really cool. Anyway, all right. So I'm pretty happy here with my eyes. So I'm going to wash my brush out, stick it in this fabulous brush holder. I love this thing. Uh, have a drink of coffee. Be merry. Now, uh, my next progression, I'm going to go from dark to light so that my darks aren't muddy. This is one of my very favorite size 6 Filbert Bristle brush. Um, so when I squint, he is a black kitty, but he's got a lot of brown and gray um, in his black. So I'm going to use violet gray, burnt umber. And a little cobalt, a little more violet gray. I'm going to put a little odorless mineral spirit in there. And let's just touch where it's real dark and see. Yeah. And I know some people say, oh, hold the brush like this. Hold the brush like this. Don't hold it like a pencil. Okay, get ready. This is really important. This is how you need to hold the brush, however it's comfortable to you. Period. You're the artist. You don't need to hold the brush the way somebody tells you if it's not comfortable to you. Don't hold it that way. Pretty simple. Okay, so you see now how my black mixture is creating these lovely little combinations of blues and, and browns and all these lovely little combinations of color and normally I wouldn't just 
do this so much like an outline as I am right now. I'm doing this mostly so you guys can, can kind of see the outline from your end. Because I'm not just doing a painting, I'm teaching how to do a painting. So I want to make sure that my viewers can see what I'm doing out here. Okay, so... So I just want to block in some dark areas. If it's too blue, add brown. Too brown, add blue. You want black, use black. You know, whatever you want. It's fine. Is he starting to look like a cootie cat yet? I hope he is. Hmm, okay. I'm gonna add a little violet gray to the mix to do over here. This brush might be a little big for that area. Uh, this is a dark area here. So what I'm painting on is a masonite board cut um, to 810, and then it is gessoed with some Dick Blick Professional Gesso. Um, and I put a little bit of a cream or a um, sienna tinted um, uh, acrylic in there when you roll the gesso on. Then my husband cuts the boards and voila. Okay, so this little fella, he's got a little dark here. See how he's starting now to look like a kitty cat? Yeah. Starting to. So for anybody at home wanting to do one of your pets, don't be afraid to do it. The worst thing you could do is screw up and start again, but you win because either way you get to paint. If you have questions, shoot me an email or, you know, find me. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm not hard to find, that's for sure. I almost feel like this brush is too big for some of the stuff I want to do, but using a big brush is good for covering mass areas, so I guess I'll just... I'm just gonna fill it in, go for the gusto. If it doesn't turn out, then we'll do another one. Okay, there's a little violet gray that I see in here. So in order to be able to work with your paint, um, you have to have paint on there. So you can't paint really thin, you know, you gotta have some paint on there. So I see some blue, I see some purple. Okay, starting to look like my little monster. Dry brush, can't paint with no paint. So you add paint. Fill them in. This ear is interesting because it's a strange angle. Normally, he has really tall ears and they're really, you know, he's a Maine Coon, so he has these wispy things. Oops, I don't know if I like that. That might be too much. Dry brush can erase oil also. Um, yeah. So I'm going to switch to a slightly shorter brush, I think. Let's see how this one works. And get a little bit of the blue and the brown and the gray. Okay.
So I'm noticing in here. There's dark. I can't see if his shoulder is here or if his head comes this way. I can't really tell. I think it goes straight down. not, we can do this. Remember this one? He raised. Yeah, I think that's better. It's the beauty of oil, folks. You can't do that with watercolor. Nope. Probably can't do it with acrylic. I'm not sure. So I'm trying to get this up a little so you can see the bottom here. Not that I want to draw the eye to the bottom, but I'm just trying to get the bottom furs in. I love it. One of my, one of my friends and my students, Lily, she always says, you make it look so easy. Well, <laughs> it's not easy. The same stuff goes through my mind that goes through your mind, I can assure you. Okay, I just want to get that bottom in. I'm going to add the tiniest bit of purple because I see it. So, I'm going to add a little bit of it in here. There. It's actually got a little more white in there. No, he doesn't have any white on him, but it's the way the light reflects. A little pink too. It's the way the light is reflecting on him. And I love to use color. A lot of people are afraid to use color. I love to use color. So we're going to take and just put a real thin wash uh, uh, in here. It's too brown, add blue. But we need a little dark underneath here. So the only way to do that is put it in there. And you want your brush strokes to go the direction that the fur goes, otherwise the fur won't look real. Most of you probably already knew that. Let a few of these go like this. Okay, so we have a good start on this. I think we're starting to get there. It's starting to look. I'm going to use a little actually black because down here it's a little darker under his under his little main mane, <laughs> for lack of a better word. His whole mane. That's my little baby. Look at him. Oh. Okay, so this is a little darker here. This has got some brown, this is dark. So what I'm doing now, um, for anyone who's wondering, is I'm just looking at the picture and I'm putting what I see that's in the picture on here. This is dark. This is dark into here. 
And the more of these you'll do, you'll find the more you use the same pattern. Like students of mine up from Christine's gallery, they'll tell you we use the same pattern when we did the fawn as we use when we did their pet portraits. So um, if you can just get used to the process, you know, dark to light, doing this this way, this that way. And I want it to look artistic too. I don't want this to look photographic. I, I could paint this much more photographically, of course, certainly, um, but I don't want to. <laughs> so, okay, the top of the head has a huge shadow. Actually, shadow and a big highlight. So we're gonna put some of this highlight. What I did was I just put some gray and pink and purple and just mixed a bunch of color together and just kind of put it in there. And then you lift the brush as you come down toward the face. My little buddy, look at him. He's such a cute little monster. He's had a rough week, this little guy. Okay, and then th this has almost got a little red. Well, I guess I have some old red on my palette. That's not good. But it's got a little red to it up here. If you see a color and you want to put it in, put it in. Okay, now up in here, we're going to be getting into this face now. So I need a smaller brush. Let's take a look and see how Da Vinci's doing. Okay, so I have gotten some smaller brushes for the little nose area. And the first thing I'm gonna do is use the itty bitty brush from the eye to put some nostrils in. And with nostrils, you just suggest them. You can't draw them in or it won't look right. So you just kind of suggest them. That one's there. Uh, and this kind of does this. It's very strange how this how this works. Okay, I don't know if you guys could see me do that, so I'm going to put it back up here. But uh, this whole area is dark. As is this area. Again, you can use black, or you can mix brown and blue. You can use purple. I'm just trying to block this in for you so you can see at home kind of what I'm, what I'm doing. People love their pets. Okay, so I have now established his jawline. So his jaw is down here, right? And it's in shadow. Um, and then this would be the side of his face. So this, there's, I'm gonna use black right here because this is a significant indicator of a change in anatomy right there, okay? Also um, right here, I wanna use so key areas where he has a lot of dark on him, I'm going to put a lot of dark in the painting. Ah, uh, yeah, here. Okay. This whole area has a lot of dark. That's lighter, a little dark there. Here, 
Okay, my little buddy. So now it's going to get a little lighter. And there's a little lavender in there. So use a little bit of your violet gray. And just let's see. Eh, not light enough. Let's add a little white. Let's see what happens now. Nah, not light enough. I think I'm going to lift that off. It's like a give and take, isn't it? It's like a constant game of what will work, what won't. There we go. I really like to use pink in these highlights because I see it, but certainly if you don't see it in yours, and he's a boy, so you know, some people might be like, why would you? put pink on a boy. Well, because I see it. It makes sense to me and I like it. So that's why. Okay. Da Vinci, my little buddy. He's starting to come together. He has a little light blue up here that I see. And I see that blue here, too. Actually, it's got a little more cobalt in it. It's not quite so turquoise. I'm going to add a little bit more cobalt. Again, subtlety here is very important. If you just put straight blue and it's not the right value, it's not going to read right. So just always be aware of that stuff. All these little secrets and trinkets along the way that we learn. A little more blue. There's not a lot of uh, bristle in the end of this, and I like that because it's more controlled. I have more control over exactly where I want to put stuff. I like that a lot. Okay, the eye, your, your, your paints need to kind of blend, too. You don't want everything to... Oops. Okay. Well, he's starting to look like a cutty. My little buddy. Whoa. Sorry, guys. Okay. So... Here we go. Let's mix a new batch here, a little blue, a little bit of this gray. There we go. Uh, it's here. And just keep mixing it until you get the one you color you that you're looking for. Pretty close to what I'm looking for. So this is how you make a black cat look like he has highlights, right? It's exactly how you do it. Is you use blues and grays and purples and stuff. You go in the direction of the fur. And then we're going to put some really great highlights on, too. That's going to be the fun part. It's like, it's like dessert. Okay, so I need a little more dark in here. Oh, I have some angry blue jays outside. I'm not sure why I fed them. Now around the eye, I do want to keep it pretty black, so I'm going to use black. Because you want the attention to go into that eye. That's definitely where I want to direct my attention. Okay. 
Funny, it's already starting to look like the little fella. Huh. No black for there. Also has something here. And see how it's starting to kind of blend together? That's what we want. That's what you want. Because the fur, fur blends together. Unless you want to leave some bold strokes that you could see you could do that too okay so i want to get this gray now of his little little face here there's a little bit of that pinky color in here too i know it seems very strange when you paint it to put that in there but it's there so you have to put it there here's his little under his nose area a little white here because I noticed this is a lot lighter so I'm going to add white to my combo and I'm going to assume this will be good that's one of the lightest spots on him which we're going to add some more light spots later but right now just kind of want to focus on getting Okay, and then this is a little pinker. And I've had people look and say, well, I don't see the pink. How do you see it? Just squint and look. Don't see a cat. See colors and values and shapes. You know, see, see something different. See what no one else sees and you'll know what nobody else knows, like they said in uh, Patch Adams. Okay. Little pink. I'm just trying to get all this figured out. Okay, so his nose on the front here is a little darker. There's his nostril, right? His other nostrils over here. And in the middle, he's got some gray. But again, talking about subtleties. Gotta figure out what color gray. It almost looks like Somehow this nostril is like up here. Is that accurate? Look at the reference, look at the reference, look at the reference. Okay. Take my own advice, right guys? All right. buddy. Okay. Now I can take this, put a real light wash,
what may look like a irresponsibly messy and fast to you is actually just years and years of painting. Um, it's just how I paint. I'm just trying to figure out how I want to do this right here area. That's how I want to do it. Just like that. Okay. gonna let you guys watch for a second while I do some of the stuff that I do. Now his other ear I see and this is strange but this is what I see is a little peach. So I'm gonna put a little peach. I don't know if it's a reflection. I'm not sure exactly what it is but I see it. So I'm gonna put it. All right, we're getting there. Have you seen some of my other cat commission paintings? Okay, so we are getting closer and closer to being done with this little fella. Um, I do want to show you guys how to do some whiskers. And I would like to put a few little highlights behind the kitty. So I'm going to use a flat brush uh, like this, little flat top brush. Dip it in my turpentine, get a little Naples yellow and white that's not contaminated with all these other colors I've been using. And um, just kind of put a little highlight here behind them. Not sure why I wanted to do that but I did again it's art do whatever you want just felt like he needed a highlight here there I like that and then I'm gonna use a little orange and a little pink and a little Naples and a little white Ooh, too orange. Yikes. A little more Naples, a little more pink. And I just want to see. Yeah, it's not going to work out how I wanted it to. I should be worrying about all this background stuff later. Anyway, I just wanted to put a little highlight there. Just a little. Okay. 
So um, what we have left here is basically just a little bit of highlights and some whiskers. So for whiskers, you can use, whoops, well, I'm not gonna use that palette knife. You can use a palette knife and a brush. So where he's dark, you're gonna want, and I wanna get rid of that. I use my fingers constantly, by the way, with painting. Um, you're gonna wanna use your purple blue mixture with some white, maybe add just a tad bit more blue and white uh, for those whiskers. Okay, so you got a nice mix here and you're gonna take and you're gonna put, load one side of the knife, like so, and just put a nice whisker, just like that. Uh, if you've never done this before, I highly recommend practice before you do it on your painting. Just because, uh, you know, <laughs> palette knife's a tricky thing to learn. All right, he also has a couple of them up here. And he has a couple over here that come off of his eye like this. Those we're gonna add, make it a little darker. And use some more turp. We want those a little darker. The reason we want those darker, because they're going on the lighter background, right? So. Want them a little darker. We are having issues here getting our dark mix. This is not uncommon, by the way. Put a little brown, put a little blue. Don't be afraid to use the paint, right guys? A little gray. All right, now it's dark. Now we should not have any troubles. Load one half of the knife and whoop, whoop. There we go. That's what I want to see. That's my little kitty. Aww. And I really want to keep it fresh and loose and artistic. I don't want to paint it to death. Um, but if you painted something you don't like or you want to change, you can either very lightly go across a whisker like that. You can dab the bottom of it to make it blend in a little better. Also on this little fella, he's got some little black dots here too that I didn't quite put in. Little, little dots where his little whiskers come in, I guess. Is that what those would be? I don't know, but I see them. So I better put them in. One of my painter buddies will come over and say, oh, you forgot something. <laughs> okay. There, just add in a few little, you know, and you don't want a hard edge because it's in the fur. You don't want a hard edge. Just like up here, I just noticed I have a hard edge. You don't want hard edges in fur. Just get rid of it. Hard edges are not good. There. He's so damn cute. Excuse my language, but such a cute little kitty. He's definitely my baby. All right. I'm gonna use something to blend some of this too, but like, and if you don't like these, if you think, oh, that's messy, just take your brush, wipe it off, take your brush, oops, make sure you're painting steady, wipe it off, take your brush. You can do it like that too, if you feel like you're, you've got too much. It's real easy to erase things you don't like. It's 
Serpentine is freaking magical stuff. And you know, I could keep working this and keep working this and keep working this, and then it's going to start to look like a photo, which is what I don't want. So I'm pretty close to being where I would say done. Um, I am going to feather in a little bit of his fur and add a few highlights. But I'd say that's pretty close. So for highlights, take a little white, take a little bit turquoise. I don't want this watered down, though. I actually want some paint on here. Okay, and I just want to touch here. 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 And I know when you're doing it, you're going to say, ah, it doesn't look right, I'm screwing it up. No, you're not. You're not screwing it up. It's good. My little buddy, look at him, he's so damn cute. All right, um... And then use your fingers. Why not? It's fun. Um, I do see one error I want to correct before I say this is good and everybody have fun painting your kitties. Um, I don't know which brush I want to use for this. Maybe this one. Uh, the error I want to correct is just simply... This is a little too dark here. A little too high up there. See, so then after you're done with the basic painting, you can just kind of squint and go in and correct things that look like they should be corrected. And there he is, the Kitana, my Kitana Da Vinci, my little baby. So when you're done, ladies and gentlemen, you just sign your name at the bottom. I'd recommend practicing that too. And you are all done with your lovely little portrait of your kitty or puppy or your baby. So if you like my videos, please hit like and subscribe. It's free and it helps support my channel. And thank you to all my Patreon followers. That also helps support my channel. See you next time.